Prueleaf gives a portion of her brother's simply wonderful coronation quiche to the Duke of Edinburgh. The coronation quiche has received the seal of approval from Dame Prueleaf, a judge on the Great British Bake Off, who declared the dish to be simply exquisite. The chef and TV host tried the official coronation pastry at a special great lunch on Tuesday at Westminster Abbey, which was attended by religious leaders from all around the nation. She was one of the first individuals to do so. The outdoor celebration, which was organized to demonstrate how food can unite people of different religions and ethnicities and was hosted by the Dean of Westminster, served as inspiration for others to plan their own joyful parties. Throughout the course of the coronation weekend, tens of thousands of street celebrations are anticipated, and on Sunday, May 7, the country will come together for the coronation big lunch. The Duke of Edinburgh brought the coronation quiche, which was created with spinach, broad beans, and tarragon and baked in the kitchen of Buckingham Palace, to the abbey so that religious leaders might enjoy it. Dame Prue, 83, a big lunch advocate, praised the dish for being seasonal. She declared, the quiche was extremely excellent. It was a really wonderful quiche because there was no soggy bottom, the custard wasn't overdone and dry, and the tarragon was balanced perfectly. Quiche is for everyone. If the pastry is nicely buttered and the ingredients are good, it will taste delicious even when it is cold. I can still clearly recall quiche Lorraine's distinguished status 60 years ago. One of the best pastries to prepare is still this one. The king and queen consort chose the quiche recipe because it can be served hot or cold, serves as a sharing dish, accommodates a wide range of dietary needs, and is simple to modify to suit various tastes. The palace said that it tasted fantastic and had the advantage of not being overly complicated or requiring expensive or difficult to find ingredients. The Duke of Edinburgh jokingly said, we're not going to have a bake-off, as he gave Dame Prue a slice of the quiche. It better taste as delicious as it sounds, she retorted. After eating lunch with religious leaders from all over the country, Dame Prue praised the power of food to unite people. She declared, food is about more than just nutrition. It's the thing that allows you to talk to one other, it's how you establish friends, and it's the glue that holds families together. She commended the variety of cuisines available in Britain and asserted that organising a big lunch celebration should not be hampered by the inability to cook well. If you recall what happened for the Queen's Jubilee, there were tables full with every kind of national dish you could imagine, and people actually were out on the streets. That is what Britain ought to stand for. The community and social interaction are the main goals of this meal, to quote the host. Don't cook if it makes you anxious. You can always go through the shop and get loads of mouthwatering items. According to Dame Prue, one of her personal coronation preparations would involve baking fish that has been covered in puff pastry and is fashioned like the king's head on a stamp. Dr. David Hoyle, the Dean of Westminster, expressed his hope that gatherings like the big lunch and the coronation festivities could bridge divisions in our divided society. We're now really excellent at identifying our differences and yelling about them, he added. Our society is fractured, moments like these are necessary to jog our memories of the affection and companionship we formerly shared. The coronation is a time for nations and the Commonwealth to commemorate a shared past and consider the potential benefits of rekindled relations. It is a time for celebration, but it is also a chance to emphasize the emotional ties that cross all barriers. The coronation was a changing point in our national life, according to Dr. Hoyle, and it was one of those occasions when you step onto the stage of history. He promised there will be a celebration in the evening when asked about his personal plans for May 6, the day of the coronation. In his remarks during the lunch, Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby remarked, when we share a meal with others, we recognize how much we have in common. One of our greatest strengths is the variety of our nation, with all of its many cultures and religious communities. I so sincerely hope that everyone will enjoy the coronation big lunch and that they will all have fun, unwind, celebrate, engage with their neighbours, and make new friends.
The Big Lunch is a neighborhood gathering sponsored by the National Lottery and organized by the Eden Project. It usually takes place in June, however this year it was shifted to May to coincide with the coronation. Co-founder of the Eden Project Sir Tim Smith observed, We Brits are always fairly quiet, and we mistake our reserve for hostility. In reality, though, the majority of people are actually quite kind. Community isn't gone, it's simply hidden. People are mostly good. And what they want are justifications for getting together. The Big Lunch is merely a pretext for us to highlight the best aspects of what is currently in place. He joined arms with other guests as they posed for a picture, appearing to be in good spirits. A little over six months after the passing of Queen Elizabeth II in September, Edward and Sophie, formerly known as the Countess and Earl of Wessex, received their new titles in February. Earlier in the month, the couple joined other royals at the Easter Sunday service. As additional information about the impending celebrations next month is released, Edward is seen attempting the coronation quiche. On the entertainment front, the event will feature performances by Katy Perry, Take That, Lionel Richie, and international opera superstar Andrea Bocelli. Additional performers named by the BBC include vocalist Freya Ridings, who will perform a duet with producer and musician Alexis French, and Welsh bass baritone Sir Bryn Terfel. The Coronation Concert, which will be broadcast on BBC One and Radio Two as well as catch-up services on Sunday, May 7, will be attended by some 20,000 members of the general public. The concert will honour the Four Nations and the Commonwealth while celebrating a new chapter in the nation's history and will feature themes of love, respect, and optimism. When the Duke of Sussex travels to the UK for the King's coronation, rumours say Prince William has no plans to visit his younger brother. According to royal observers, Harry, 38, spoke to his father in a sincere conversation on Saturday in an effort to reduce hostilities, but he did not bring up their ongoing disagreement with William. Also, it is acknowledged that there won't be any opportunity for the two to meet while Harry is away for the event on May 6, according to The Sun. The royal family all have very hectic schedules, according to Majesty magazine editor Ingrid Seward, who also believes that Harry talking about his connection with William is for another time. It would be great for Harry to stay around and be friends, the royal expert said. The Duke's solo journey across the pond is anticipated to be brief. She remarked, you'd think Harry would want to mingle with his family out of politeness, no matter how tough it would be for him. Because it has eased the route to rapprochement, Miss Seward continued, she is happy Harry has spoken with Charles. Charles will greet his son, she said. His relationship with William, in my opinion, is one for another time. William, 40, and Harry will cross paths on May 6 in Westminster Abbey at the coronation. The two will reportedly meet for the first time since Harry's memoir, Spare, was published in January and he referred to his brother as his arch-nemesis. Also, Harry has publicly urged his relatives to apologise to him and Meghan for what they perceive to be slights. The Prince of Wales is reported to still feel betrayed and upset, especially in light of the disclosures in the memoirs, even if he is said to be usually fairly forgiving and to be delighted that his youngest son is visiting. The gulf between the brothers, who are formerly as close as siblings could be, is allegedly so wide that sources claim they are unable to see how their relationship can ever be healed.